Nowadays, originality is prized highly in the arts. Base a song or story to obviously on another one, and you run the risk of being immediately summoned to the courts, accused of copyright infringement, plagiarism, and or being muttered darkly about. Even if you didn't mean to plagiarise, you can still end up in trouble. George Harrison, a member of the Beatles, of course, was found guilty of subconscious plagiarism in the 1970s after his song, My Sweet Lord, was found to be too similar to another song called He's So Fine, recorded by the Sheafans in 1962. And Harrison was forced to pay up the sum of 587,000 US dollars. My sweet Lord. But Shakespeare and other Elizabethan dramatists would happily plunder other texts, especially classical sources, to gain ideas and plots for their plays. And this is certainly the case with As You Like It. First performed in 1600, its plot, at least, is remarkably similar to Thomas Lodge's Rosalind, a prose narrative published ten years earlier in 1590. So how did Shakespeare transform Lodge's Rosalind, and to what purposes and effect? Stay tuned, you're watching Schofield on Shakespeare. There is no doubt that the plots of As You Like It and Rosalind are remarkably similar. Let's sum up the plot of Rosalind. The story is set in France and the rightful ruler, Gerismond, has been usurped and banished to the Forest of Arden by a wicked man called Torismond. Torismond later exiles Gerismond's daughter, Rosalind, due to paranoid fears about her potential for treason and his own daughter, Alinda, elects to leave with her. The story also describes three sons of a noble man, St John of Bordeaux, who dies early on, Saladin, Fernandin and Rosada. The middle brother, Fernandin, is a bookly academic and devotes himself to study. Saladin, meanwhile, is jealous of his youngest brother and plots deviously against him. Following various mishaps and a public wrestling triumph witnessed by and admiring Rosalind, Ros Rosada is forced to run away to the forest of Arden with an old loyal servant. Here he encounters a disguised Rosalind, now known as Ganymede, and Ganymede sets up a role play in which Rosada will prove his love by wooing him as if he were Rosaline, which of course he really is. Towards the end of the story, Rosada saves Saladin's life after coming across him asleep in the forest with a lion waiting to pounce nearby, and this results in their reconciliation. The story ends with three weddings, Rosada marrying Rosalind, Saladin, Elinda, and a shepherd, Montanus, wedding Phoebe, who had previously fallen in love with the disguised Ganymedes. Change the names, add in a few more characters and an additional wedding, and you have the exact same plot of As You Like It in a nutshell. But as well as transferring Rosalind from a prose narrative into a play, and I would discuss some of the effects of this transformation a little later on, an analysis of some of the fine detail changes gives insight into Shakespeare's intentions when writing As You Like It. A key theme in many of Shakespeare's plays is that of sibling rivalry. Look at two of Leah's daughters trying to outdo each other to describe their love for their father in Act 1, Scene 1 of King Lear, and Edmund's cunning machinations against Edgar, or Don John's wicked plotting against his half-brother, Don Pedro, in Much Ado About Nothing. Well, 
In As You Like It, Shakespeare makes the two rulers brothers, Duke Frederick and Duke Senior. Whereas in Lodge's Rosalinds, Torismond and Gerismond are not related. This results in the audience being led to draw parallels between the other pair of warring brothers in the play, Oliver and Orlando, and think more explicitly about the theme of relationships between close family members, something Lodge is also unequivocally interested in. As his final paragraph shows, Concord is the sweetest conclusion, and amity betwixt brothers more forcible than fortune. What is also interesting is that Shakespeare removes some of Lodge's explanation and justification for sibling rivalry. In Rosaline, Rosada and Saladin's father, Sir John of Bordeaux, publicly tells all his children that his youngest, Rosada, will exceed you all in bounty and honour. Saladin is left feeling bitter about his father's testament, how he had bequeathed more to his younger brothers than himself, that Rosada was his father's darling but now under his tuition. Little wonder Saladin decides to mistreat Rosada after being humiliatingly so open by his father and informed that, without any doubt at all, his younger brother will turn out to be far more honourable and kind. But Shakespeare chooses to have the equivalent of Sir John of Bordeaux, Sir Roland de Bois, dead by the time As You Like starts. There are no tearful bedside summits, no intimate final words that show clearly where the old man's preferences lie. Moreover, in his will, Sir Roland de Bois has stuck firmly to the age-old tradition of primogeniture. Unlike in Rosaline, where Sir John gives Saladin 14 ploughlands and the younger Rosada 16, in As You Like It, the eldest brother Oliver receives the entire estate, and the youngest brother is made poor by merely receiving a thousand crowns. And so when Oliver mistreats Orlando, there are no obvious reasons for him doing so, as he himself acknowledges at the end of Act 1, Scene 1. My soul, yes I know not why, hates nothing more than he, yet is gentle, never schooled and yet learns, full of noble devices and all sorts enchantingly beloved. The verb hate shows the extent of Oliver's feelings to his own brother, whilst the connective yet shows Oliver's recognition of the lack of logic or fairness in the way he feels. He acknowledges that his brother has many good qualities, but still cannot remove the intense dislike he has towards him. So what is the effect of Shakespeare removing some of the key motivations for the elder brother behaving so spitefully towards the younger? Well, it suggests an interest in Shakespeare towards the frequent irrationality of human behaviour, the fact that we are often guided by dishonourable impulses that do us no credit whatsoever. Oliver is a more powerful character dramatically than Saladin, for we recognise in him our own potential for jealous, unreasonable behaviour, which has nothing to do with that person's actions or behaviour, merely our own imperfections. Further analysis reveals additional differences between Lodge's warring brothers and Shakespeare's. In Rosaline, the men's fights are more frequent, more violent, involve more people and are described in greater detail. For example, early in the story, Rosada attacks Saladin with a great rake and is later bound in fetters and chains to a post. Saladin then, then shows off his chained up brother to guests as a man lunatic only for Rosada to escape and get a pole axe in his hand. He flew among them with such violence and fury that he hurt many, slew some and drove his brother and all the rest quite out of the house. When Saladin returns with the sheriff, Rosada once again leapt out and assailed them, wounded many of them and caused the rest to give back so that Adam and he broke through the priests in despite of them all and took their way towards the forest of Arden. Shakespeare includes some of the younger brother's strength in the inclusion of the wrestling scene and an initial fight between the brothers in Act 1, Scene 1, in which Orlando snarls, Wert thou not my brother, I would not take this hand from thy throat till the other had pulled out thy tongue for saying so. However, once first Orlando and later Oliver arrive in the Forest of Arden, then they become remarkably passive, and, the strange lion and snake scene aside, any potential or desire for aggression seems a long-forgotten memory. This is not the case in Lodge's Rosalind. As well as charting the brothers' bloody, violent feuds around their family estate in minute detail, Lodge also has them using this male power and strength to good effect when Aliena and Ganymede are attacked by bandits 
keen to sell them to their corrupt king as a sexual gift. They, of course, are not aware that Aliena is, in fact, a Linda, Torismond's own daughter. First Rosada dealt such blows among them with his weapons as he did witness well upon their carcasses that he was no coward. Then Saladin heaved up a forest bill he had on his neck, and the first he struck had never after more need of the physician, redoubling his blows with such courage that the slaves were amazed at his valour. The references to carcasses were generally used to describe dead animals soon to be cut up and eaten as meat rather than dead humans emphasises Rosada's savage brutality when defending Aliena and Ganymede, whilst the suggestion that Saladin's first victim would never need a physician or doctor again because he is dead gives a dark, bloodthirsty feeling to his actions. So Shakespeare removes this scene entirely from As You Like It, and in doing so he is ensuring the focus remains on his heroine Rosalind and her subversive ability to not only look after herself with no male protector but also to coordinate the lives of others. Whereas in Lodge's Rosalind, Ganymede is able to do nothing but passively cry out to Rosada once violent hands have been laid upon him, in Shakespeare's As You Like It, his Ganymede is left entirely free from attack to allow her to utterly dominate and control proceedings, ultimately to her benefit, but also for that of many others.